So I'm going to talk about uh, the data platform and the five ways and how we have uh, tried to solve the five ways in the, the big data in the domain. Uh, so the five ways in the big data I will talk about would be volume, velocity, variety, veracity, and volume. So that's a, that's a conception there where people think like if you use a, a big data framework like Hadoop or a NoSQL databases, all of these would be uh, handled automatically. Right? It's, it's not always the case. So I'm going to talk about how data platform tries to handle these, the, the problems we see in these five ways and how data platform tries to address this. So I'm going to go through today. So let's first talk about variety. So variety, like with the in, in the IoT and cloud, cloud uh, computing, the data that we get is a huge set of data we're getting every day through various devices, which uh, contains structured, unstructured, various kinds of data. So with the conventional methods or conventional relational models, you, it's unable to store them as is. So with data platform, what we're trying to do is we are trying to categorize these into different uh, sub-levels so that we can store them in different perspectives and st store data there. For example, uh, we have this transaction data, reference data concept where, say, the data can be categorized into high level two different areas. One will like time series data, where data will fall into different time, time uh, series values. And that's the reference data. So categorization this will, like this will help to store them optimally. And so data platform introduced something called data streams. This helps you like having different streams, like similar set of data could, will be grouped together so that they can be stored together and queried or retrieved in a, a conventional manner. Other thing is like say with, uh, say with a tool like POSP, the objects that get created change uh, frequently. So if you want to store them in a conventional archive storage, the relevant uh, schemas will have to change as well. But uh, that's not going to be optimal or not going to be uh, practical always. Uh, so with data platform, what we're trying to do is we have this unstructured or uh, unschema data that we're trying to store here. And underlying, we're going to store in the S3 buckets. So whatever data that comes from, uh, that comes into data platform will be stored as is in the archive storage without any changes. So if any the new, new changes happening in those objects, there's no change to us, it will be stored in the data platform. So that's how we're trying to change the, uh, tackle the variety part of it, and we support these things as well. Uh, so velocity. So velocity say when uh, data is being ingested into uh, data data mart, uh, the, the the speed of it might not be able, the data the consumers might not be able to capture everything at and real time. So say the amount of consumption that uh, the tools can make against the data that is being pumped in. Uh, it, that times it might be not enough. So there will be data ingestion by faster than data being consumed. So there might be data losses. So in order to uh, in order to solve that problem, the data platform what it does is first of all we uh, the data processing and the data storage has been has been decoupled. So first of all, what we when the whatever data comes, it goes into a data queue. So that uh, if there's any bu buffering required, it will be buffered here. So if there's ingestion is more fa is faster than the data being uh, consumed upon, it will be stored in the queue. So that's one thing that we have done. And next, our processing is you, processing components are based on Apache Spark. So this is, as you might know, it's a, a distributed processing framework. So if the consumption is fast, or if the consumption is not speed enough for us, and the, the queue is getting uh, increasing, we are able to horizontally scale that. So we can add additional consumers or scale up the consumers so that it will catch up with the data that's being pumped in. So next, uh, we're going to talk about the volume part here. Volume is the biggest part of big data, I guess. Uh, with the conventional methods, like data is stored in, uh, say, for example, MySQL databases. So in our current data, data mart works in that way. But uh, say, more realistically speaking, like only some of the data will be queried frequently, and some of them, although they are there, we, we need those data, they might not be used always. They might be used very rarely. If you have them in conventional data marts, we are going to uh, say, have, or, or the cost, would, cost for the, all the data would be the same. Like all the data from say 2011 Jan onwards until now will cost the same for us. And uh, retrieval, or yes, you can retrieve the data there as well, but those retrieval might not be frequent. We still are wasting storage and computation on, on top of those. And uh, scaling them up, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare for us. So that's where we have horizontal scalable storage. For as of now, we have ES data or Elasticsearch, which can be easily horizontal scalable. Plus we have uh, Amazon S3. 
So with uh, what we are doing, doing here is that frequently queried data, so that's like the past four months data from our perspective, is stored in Elasticsearch that you can serve queries that comes in that time period in a faster manner. The rest of the data will be stored in S3 device or S3 storage, which is uh, very cost, cost effective, very low, low, cost, low cost, and if required, data will be queried from there and, retrieve, and given, given out to the, the, the consumers. But on the frequent data is stored in ES to uh, be cost effective and to increase the performance. And also what we have done is like uh, the data we get, we are storing them into monthly chunks. A chunk, say, I'll not get to technical terms, it, it means something like a, say for US specific, a, a relational table. So every month there will be a new chunk created with, within our end. A new table, it's not a table, but say, something like Elasticsearch index. We create that every month. So whenever data comes in, that only a particular date or particular month would be impacted. So example, there would be chunks for 2019 November, 2019 uh, October, 2019 September, so on and so forth. And the data that comes in goes into one of these buckets. This, help, this will help with updates and retrievals because when you say you want to get data for, say from uh, July until now, you only know what are the exact time, the, the chunks that need to be queried, and we are going to query those chunks. So this not like a like a relational indexes, not that it's like relational tables. Almost in relational tables, we are having chunks there, and data will be queried from there. That is why again, it's help for fast retrieval and fast updates. So again, as I said, the, our archive storage is S3, which is uh, only required. It cost is mostly the uh, the storage cost is very free, very low, and the other cost would be for querying purposes. But if the queries are very low or very infrequent, it will be almost non-existence. So the cost, of, cost, of, cost side of it is it's very low. And the veracity, the next point, veracity is something like say, with the amount of load of, the load of data you're getting, huge load of data, with the lot of variety, the applicability of it, or there might be uh, anomalies in the data. So you might need to filter out data when you when you do an analysis or reporting. So what, in data plan, what we're trying to do is we have specs on top of uh, the data being ingested. So specs will allow to filter out data if required while, while being stored in the reporting layer itself. So if there's any data that you might not want, you can always have ingestion specs as well. And also, uh, at the same time, while uh, our, D our DSL, or our, our DSL to get the data out of data platform, is the query API, you might, you, most of might know it. So there you can always specify filters saying, these are the ranges we want to get data from. So if there's an anomaly, so outliers, they will be filtered out. So that's how we are trying to address this veracity problem. And, and the last one, that the last V out of the way is the, the value. So how much value does this data that we have uh, impacts the uh, business or the, or the organization? So one thing that is required is like how soon we can get the data into a reporting layer. And also the data you have in your data marts or whatever, how, how much analysis you can do on top of that. Uh, so in data platform side, like from the time it hits our ingestion or the, our ingestion part, from the, to the time to reflex in our reporting, it's like with, with a matter of seconds, like maybe 15 to 20 seconds at most. So if there are any decisions that me to made, it's almost, not, not real time, but almost real time, the data will get reflected in our reporting engines. And also we are, we are specifying the, the specifications, so you might be using the, the aggregate specs, are designed to reflect your report, reports, so that only the ones that are required will be captured, filtered out, and stored in our reporting layers so you can retrieve data faster. So there's no purging, like uh, S3, from S3 level uh, or archive storage, there's no purging, all data is available. And the data there, all the data is there, that you have to query, you have to query, query data and perform analysis on top of this data. So from our archive storage, we can always have horizontal scale of processes. So as of now, we're writing uh, Apache Spark processes to get those data out and uh, do analytics there, like ML and all. And uh, you can all, we, we, are, we are in the process of introducing other, other additional layers as well to help improve this part. Uh, so that's basically a, a, some understanding of, I try to give you about how data platforms try to, under, to uh, try to solve the five E's of the big data world. Uh, so if there are any questions, you can ask me, or you can wind up. Yeah, so a question being soon, like whether we can break the chunks into merchant wise tanker. It's always technically possible. It's a it will be it will be cost effect or it will be cost will be higher for us because uh, like as I said, a chunk itself has some uh, 
has some additional uh, storage and uh, say what I, what I call the maintenance task overhead for us. Say we are using Ambari and all to maintain the maintain our internal chunks. So when the number of chunk increases, it causes it causes chaos within the the cluster of our storage device. So we are trying to optimize that as well. We, although we can do that technically, we don't do that. Additionally, we like that's a thing called like we are we. There's an additional thing called segmenting, which happens within the storage, and we know exactly which segment each merchant goes to. So when you query a data, uh, even within that chunk, we know exactly which segment to query. So it's like even we are reducing the amount of data, we are within a chunk. That's like a bit more technical. That I want to go to that this point as well. That's how we are done. Although your question, we can do it technically. We don't do it practically. It is going to be a maintenance nightmare for us, because we are talking about say each month around 5,000 chunks as of additional chunks. So segmenting happens in that way kind of merchants. So segments, we have around 10 segments as of now. So segments, like it's like a subset of merchants will be in those segments. So when you, it's uh, as of now, it's five, can be increased. As of now, we are in five segments for the monthly chunks. Uh, almost thousand million. It all is handled internally. So we, we do the segment routing by ourselves. The segment size will increase as well, correct. So based on the number of the amount of data we have, we will be increasing the segment size as well. Uh, segmenting size will change, and also like uh, with the enterprise notion, uh, as of now there's no impact for us. But with the, as a next step, we are thinking of doing parallel processing for query, querying data to support this. Say if the huge enterprise comes up with say. 10,000 operators, we might not be able to solve it with the existing uh, architecture. So we are trying to look at some new architectures on top of it, or new additional layers on top of it, support it. It's currently being uh, looked upon. We haven't introduced it since so in the POC levels. It may be end of next quarter, you might see something there. Anything else, guys? There's nothing else you can wind up. Thank you, everyone.